Hi everyone, I hope you're having a good day so far. Um, I am going to read Mrs. McBloom, Clean Up Your Classroom. It was written by um, Kelly DiPucchio, and I thought it was a good choice because um, I just cleaned up my classroom. So, here we go. It's a fact that nearly every school from Kennebunkport, Maine to Chickaloon, Alaska has one teacher whose classroom is a sorry, jumbled up mess. Knickerbocker Elementary in the pint-sized town of up yonder was no exception. I hope my room doesn't look like that. I don't think it does. Mrs. McBloom in room five had a classroom that would impress even the most clutter-loving junkyard dog. It was a heap of mess on account of her never cleaning it. Not once in 50 years of teaching. Every year, Mrs. McBloom's students yammered, Mrs. McBloom, clean up your classroom. For decades, Principal Pumpernickel pleaded, Mrs. McBloom, clean up your classroom. 22 janitors came and went over the years. They all grumbled, Mrs. McBloom, clean up your classroom. Oh, higgly piggly, Mrs. McBloom would say, it's on my to-do list. Truth is, it had been on her to-do list for nearly 45 years. See, it's listed right here above. Take a fancy schmancy cruise. That sounds like fun. Room 5 hadn't always been an eye-popping, heart-stopping disaster. When Mrs. McBloom first started teaching, long before that Armstrong fella set his tootsies on the moon, it looked like this. Round about the time Principal Pumpernickel was a little nipper in the classroom, it looked like this. See how it's changed in over the years? Now, one week before Mrs. McBloom was fixing to retire, her room looked like this. Giant sunflowers drooped over desks like decorative lamps. Tangly vines with fat green beans climbed the walls, and a genuine, full-grown, ruby-red apple tree grew smack dab in the middle of her classroom. Years of science experiments had left all kinds of critter hopping and clucking and flying around room five. Chickens laid eggs in the coat cubbies. Butterflies fluttered back and forth between children's heads in pencil erasers. It's pretty cool. There were more books stacked in Mrs. McBloom's room than there were in the entire up yonder library. And you can bet your uncle's monkey that there were more piles of paper crammed into room five than there were in the entire up yonder paper airplane factory down the road. Now, something drastic had to be done right quick. Sweet young Miss Bumblesprout was preparing to take Mrs. McBloom's place in the fall. Miss Bumblesprout fretted, Mrs. McBloom, clean up your classroom, pretty please. She's like, oh, if you don't do it, I'm gonna have to do it. And that's a lot of work. Oh, higgly piggly, sighed Mrs. McBloom, scratching her beehive hairdo. I've backed myself into a pickle. How am I ever going to get this room cleaned up in a jiffy? The rooster perched on the patio, belted out a hearty cock-a-doodle-doo. That's a humdinger of an idea, Rudy. Much obliged, said Mrs. McBloom. Mrs. McBloom moved a cluster of frogs aside and wrote an assignment on the board. The assignment says homework. Come up with an idea to get room number five tidy, lickety split. Be creative, stretch your imagination, use your dog and anything goes. By the end of the following week, the whole class was busting with excitement. One by one, kids came to the front of the room, just past the mushroom patch, but before the mountain of unclaimed mittens and gym sneakers, to share their ideas. Sam Wigglesworth had invented a super duper picker upper thingamabob. It can pick up from zero to 10 in 60 seconds. Lily Lumpkin suggested Mrs. McBloom hire a magician. Then, abracadabra, everything will disappear. Cooper Butterbaker brought in a herd of hungry goats from his daddy's farm to demonstrate their voracious appetites. They once ate a rusty pickup truck in three hours flat. On and on, the ideas kept coming. Mrs. McBloom recorded them on the chalkboard. Georgia Peach Pit was the last student to raise her hand. She stepped over the world globe, shooed Cooper's goats, and unrolled a colorful poster board. 
It said, help Mrs. McBloom clean up the classroom day. All of up yonder is invited, Saturday, 10 a.m. If each citizen shows up to remove one item, room five will be tidy, lickety split. Free eggs and apples to everyone who helps. By Georgia, that's it, hollered Mrs. McBloom, a dilly of an idea. Oh. Word of help Mrs. McBloom clean up her class her room day spread through the town faster than Corky Redmond's chicken pox in the spring of 99. Seeing as nearly every citizen of up yonder had been a student of Mrs. McBloom's at one time or another, the whole town showed up on Saturday to help. A line of a line loop-de-looped through the halls, out the door, down the hill, and past the water tower. Okay, so it starts there. Ooh, look at all these people. They all came to help. Single file, folks moseyed through room five, picked up one item, and moved on. The Up Yonder Kazoo Band provided live entertainment. The PTA passed out free refreshments, and Mrs. McBloom got to personally shake hands with all her former students. She bawled like a baby in wet britches. <laughs> Heavens to belly buttons. The treasures pulled from the rubble were astounding. Long lost works of art, important historical documents, and rare geological finds were rediscovered. Look at all that stuff she had. The up yonder parade of pickers went on plucking for hours. Among other things, they fished out for four feathered quill pens, a pot bellied stove, three buffalo nickels, a postcard signed by President Roosevelt. 13 petrified cupcakes, a poodle skirt, a howdy doody coffee mug, a litter of kittens, a rotary dial telephone, which I don't even know if you guys know what that is, but I'll show you in a second, and a flag with 48 stars. Man. So there we go. There's the rotary phone. And if anyone can tell me why there's only 48 stars on this flag, let me know. Clay Potter found his library book. It was 35 years overdue. Fanny Freckle found her Elvis Presley lunchbox. Her lunch was still in it. P.U. And after 20 years without them, Billy Brownbuckle finally got his eyeglasses back. It's a miracle. I can see. By sundown, room five was completely cleaned out. The apple tree was replanted next to the playground and dedicated to Mrs. McBloom. Principal Pumpernickel awarded Georgia the prestigious Knickerbocker Whippersnapper Award for Excellence. Splendid use of your noggin, Miss Peachpit. Thank you, sir. All in all, it was a mighty fine day for all the good folks of up yonder. In the days that followed, the town held the granddaddy of all yard sales and sold all the knickknacks, critters, and whatnots that had been uncovered from room five. The money raised was used to send Mrs. McBloom on a fancy schmancy cruise. So there's all this stuff. And then over here. Oh, higgly piggly, bless your hearts. Bon voyage. As for sweet young Miss Bumblesprout, she began her teaching career that fall in a gussied up, spiffed up, tidy room five. Good morning, class. Open your science books. Today we're going to plant pumpkin seeds. What do you think? Is it going to start all over again? Pretty cool that they found all that stuff. So I'm um, curious if anyone knows why there's only 48 stars and not 50 like there are today. So if you know, let me know. Um, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you're having a good day today. Um, I'm here if you need anything and um, hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Miss you all. Bye.